What's up Scrollgers, it's Nerp here, and today we're on the test server because there was just recently a huge balance patch on the test server which will probably go into the live server very soon and lots of scrolls were changed. 52 scrolls uh, were altered to be exact. So in this video I'm just going to go over all of those changes, uh, mostly buffs um, I have opinions on most of them and also a couple of different things were changed also besides scrolls on this test server update uh, so custom matches now have a check checkbox if you completed them uh, it's good if you like playing those you don't have to wonder if you did one already um, or this means custom game search field is no longer cleared when entering a match I don't know maybe that was like a bug uh, rework the end screen to make it more attractive uh, they just did that right with the gold stuff and they did that like an update before too uh, by not showing all the information unless you click more info or whatever show more and then uh, some judgment was uh, slightly changed like scrolls like prisoners of war and Yara were given less of a weight so you can't find them because they're really strong in judgment stuff like that so first let's just quickly look at this so yeah if you don't know how to get to custom games you just go Skirmish custom rules. I think that maybe there should be a whole nother button for custom games. Uh, it's kind of hard to find it in Skirmish because most of you will never even click on this button, I think. Uh, I, I know I haven't clicked on this button for a very long time. I rarely play against the AI. So they can click custom rules, and I guess. Is it like lagging? I think I'm lagging here. And alright, so I guess there's a check here if you did them already. And I guess this uh, resets that bar. Okay, let me just quickly go into a skirmish. Uh, just so we can see the new end screen. We'll see if it really is more attractive. We'll be the judge. Looks the same to me. Huh? I. Well. Wait. I actually, I think, uh. I think it used to just be on the last right now, it's just one big gold total just running up. Right now, it looks like. It looks like it's not that. No, it is. So it shows the gold. You can click match if, and then you can go back to gold details. Is the gold details right now in the live server? I don't know. I don't really see why this is more attractive. <laughs> that that is in this uh, this updates update, right? Yeah, rework the end screen to make it more attractive. Is that the end screen? I don't know if that's the end screen. But whatever. All right, let's get to uh, all the scrolls that are changing. So yeah, lots of scrolls there, 52 scrolls. And it's cool that Mojang was not afraid to change uh, some Echo scrolls already. Uh, most of these are warranted buffs. Uh, a lot, most of these are scrolls that just don't really see the light of day in uh, ranked play, uh, competitive tournament play either. Uh, so if anything, I really like that uh, now people are just gonna play more, so there's more options, so the decks won't look. The problem with scrolls, I think, is a lot of, like, each faction has, like, a few decks, but they're kind of cookie cutter. Like, you kind of know, know what to expect in each deck. Uh, now I want to be like, whoa, this person just played an Atrophy. Like, I wasn't expecting that. Not just, like, playing around a few cards. So we'll start with the growth stuff. Uh, how do I, like, isn't there a way to, like, make it big? Whatever. Uh... I think so. If you go like this, I thought there, oh, there. Oh, you just click on the art there. Okay. So first we have Elon Vital. Uh, just changed. So it used to be regeneration one. Now it's regeneration two. Regeneration is just every turn you heal that much health. Uh, yeah, this is good, but definitely makes it better. But I don't know if it's viable. So we played. Uh, it used to have magic armor, which made it like okay, but now since it no, it has no more magic armor, it's just like regeneration. 
I don't know. I don't think it's really going to get played much still. But every little buff helps. Uh, next is Erode, which I thought this was an odd buff. So it's the same except for now it deals 3, mit three damage instead of 2 damage. I don't think this needed a buff. Um, the decks it's been in is like Decay decks, just splashing in growth, or Decay growth decks, uh, just to ramp your Decay. And it was already quite good with the 2 magic damage. I'm not sure 3 was necessary, but we'll see. Like, most of these scrolls are scrolls that people don't play at all, but like, some scrolls like a road, they're in competitive play, but they still got buffed. But it's always okay just to see how things shake out. Here's a scroll that nobody plays, him. Uh, now it has an Inferno, Inferno Blast like Radius, or Bombard like Radius, or Return to Nature like Radius, where uh, it will like affect all the creatures in the um, zone, and it heals everything by three. Like originally him was heal target unit by three, and then it became heal target unit fully, and now it's heal all units in its Inferno Blast thing by three. I don't think this is going to be played still, but it's better. Um, generally, generally you don't have that many things in scrolls that are hurt. Like they're either just dead or full health, it seems like. Um, but who knows, maybe, maybe in some bigger creature decks you could see this thing. Is that new card Steelwood Vindication. Illthorn Seed. Uh, now it gives spiky one to the enchanted creature. Uh, that this is a cool buff. I like how I like how they buffed it. Uh, spiky one doesn't do a whole lot, but uh, each damage you deal to opponent creature is always so valuable. So anything helps. So another card I think probably not good enough to get into competitive play. Um, I actually. Summoning uh, like this and Shroud of Unlife, something that like summons a creature where the creature was, or in this case summons a structure, an Elthorn, uh, can never be too bad because sometimes it's great for blocking attacks because then you have to get two attacks to come and destroy it. So like even though it's not quite good in constructed play, you never know, like it could work out in judgment because you don't have that many options. Next is Leeching Ring. Uh, now instead of healing by two when the creature deals damage, it is fully healed. Another one of these scrolls that I'm not sure really warrants a warrants a buff. Uh, mainly, actually, Legion Ring is like not good except for when it's on like one of those super enchanted wildlings. That's what I'm afraid of. Even though there's like Echoes added a few like anti enchantment scrolls. You still see, you still see sometimes people running those decks, and I've just gotten killed by them sometimes when I play like a growth deck that has no counter to it. Um, and Leeching Ring is one of those things that keeps healing that wildling. Uh, but I guess this buff isn't too bad uh, because this it really only helps those super enchantment decks, which there are counters to now. Vitriol Aura now gives the poisonous trait, which Mangy Rat has, which. Infected Gravelock has, uh, which, whatever that thing has, the thing that looks like a rot eater, um, definitely makes this better. It used to, it used to just be able to give po poison creatures upon attacking it, but now upon getting hit by it, it's poisonous too. Uh, so, yeah, sure. I've seen some people play Vitriol Aura in their aggroth decks before, so maybe we'll see more people play it now. I don't really see how it's, how it's so great. Um, but it's one of those like it's probably out of the lower tier now into the into just the lower mid tier and I think this might be just like a bug poisonous inch probably just say poisonous next we have nutrition uh, nutrition its cost was increased to two except except it has replenish now. Uh, I'm not really too fond of this change. I think replenish really was a trait when it was added to scrolls a couple updates ago. It just was not 
was not a good idea, I don't think. It really created lots of, lots of control, annoying decks that were just not fun to play against. And it may have hurt the rolls having Replenish. Because Replenish is a way, it basically gives you wild, so it kind of creates multi-resource decks, which is a yay, but then it creates not the kind of multi-resource decks you want. Like control decks, like they're all control decks, or like, I guess I'll just keep clearing the board, stuff like that. Uh, so now that Nutrition has Replenish, you might even see more of that stuff, uh, because we do see Nutrition in a lot of decks like that. But again, it's a uh, nutrition. Like Legion Ring is a bad scroll in like a normal deck, so maybe these buffs will make it a little better in a normal deck. Uh, next, here's a buff that I like: Outcast Rebel. Outcast Rebel uh, now has Inspiring plus one attack. Um, inspiring, uh, one of the newer growth traits. It's on. Steelwood, not Steelwood, Vindicator, uh, whatever that new Echoes guy is, the four cost Echoes guy. It's on both of the Jarls too. Now Outcast Rebel has it. Um, Outcast Rebel always a little weak compared to the other Growth 2 drops. Uh, growth is very aggressive. It's hard to really get down a three countdown creature so early. Um, but with Inspiring plus one attack, maybe it's it's competing now with with the uh, with Spotted Lynx and and other growth growth heroes like Ventral Vetter, Sister of the Fox, Kinvolk Ranger, Nog, Nognest. Uh, growth has a lot of two drops that are like in contention now to get into decks. Uh, so I definitely like how this guy was buffed to um, more playability in constructed decks. Uh, so this is like you just like I won't be surprised anymore if I see my opponent play a turn two Outcast Orbal. Uh, next is Owl. Another growth two drop. Uh, simply just gave it one more health. It used to be a one one one. This, I don't know. Owl's probably not going to be played still. It's still just a kinfolk brave with flying, and one less attack. Flying is an overrated mechanic, in my opinion. Like move two is just a lot better. Um, mainly what this does is it actually just helps sister the owl. The sister the owl spawns the owl. Uh, but. Fine buff. Don't really care about that one. Don't dislike it really either. Next is Unground. I like this one. Anytime idol takes damage, you can use dealt magic damage equal to the half that amount. Here's the key. In parentheses, rounded up. It used to be rounded down. Um, and that makes a big difference. Um, lots of times you're hit hitting an idol with three damage, and then you only deal one damage to the creature you enchanted with Unground. But now you'll be dealing two damage. Uh, so, people have played on ground in their ranked growth decks before, uh, drawing with like the Earthborn Mystic to give growth some kind of removal, which it doesn't really have, um, and maybe people will start using it again. Um, with the rounded up now, it's big, just like if you deal 5 damage, you'll deal 3 damage to the creature. If you deal 3 damage, you'll deal 2 damage to the creature. Uh, wait, so if you deal 1 damage to that, are you going to deal 1 damage to the creature? I guess so. Yeah. I might try out on ground in some growth decks. Maybe in my late game growth deck for some removal ish stuff. Bountiful Times. Now Wait, I thought I thought Bountiful Times was changed. In the in change log, doesn't it say that Bountiful Times is cost uh cost two? Did they forget to do that? Bountiful times, bountiful times, what the heck is it? Uh Bounceable times. Growth. Cost 2 was 3. Welp. Doesn't seem like this is uh, changed. Still cost 3. But, yeah. Let's pretend it's cost 2. Um, I mean, <laughs> still not really enough to uh, make it any good in uh, real matches. Um, but, I guess bunny decks, bunny uh, matches will be more exciting now. Not really a lot to say about that one. Frostbeard. One of the growth three drops that never really seems to get play in ranked matches. Uh, so it always gives that like pseudo crimson bull effect when it got killed in combat. Now it will give that pseudo crimson bull effect um, 
uh, when it's destroyed during the opponent's turn, so they could just like destroy it with magic damage, like a like a quake or a spark, and or a burn. You'll get the crimson bolt for the next turn. So this does make Frostbeard better. Um, I don't think it's going to be played still because there's these new growth three drops like Steelwood Vindicator and that other guy that three two three that gets relentless after his pillage and there's still Breaker. There's a uh, Terran Brute, there, there's more Mystic, so I don't think this is on that level. Um, but yeah, anyways, it's just a little better in Judgment now. So definitely a uh, deserving buff for Frostbeard. Not a big buff, but a little buff. Totem Mask. So Totem Mask, it used to cost 5, now it costs 3. And instead of giving plus 2 health per structure, now it gives plus 1 health. So sacrificing 2 cost for 1 less health, I'll take it. This makes Totem Mask a bit better. Um, put it on a relentless unit, it will still get pretty big, and now you don't have to sink an entire turn of five resources into it. There's just not as n there's not enough good structures and growth really to get Totem Mask to work too well. I mean, Echoes did come out with uh, a couple of good ones like the Menher and the uh, Verdant Tree thing, so those are two good structures. So maybe we'll see Totem Mask. Uh, come into play here but really growth has like stack hearts and earthen mirth so it's gonna it's gonna be tough to choose this over that being this being so conditional like just playing this you're not gonna get anything until you play structure into play um but we'll see next is ancestral pact ancestral pact uh simply increases linger to five ancestral pact it was like played a lot um, when it first uh, got changed originally so it would be you draw a scroll when one of your creatures are destroyed as a lingering spell but then they changed it so the ancestral pack counts down by one when a creature is destroyed so then it kind of stopped being played and now it has one more linger so that means you can afford one more creature to die with ancestral pact uh, which is a difference but probably not to not enough to get it played again Still a good change. Essence Feast. Man, this card's always been changed so many times. Um, known to be one of the worst scrolls uh, in scrolls. And now it might be pretty good. I do like this change a lot. Yeah, one of the worst scrolls of all time, though. In the past, you can just check it on my channel. Top 10 worst scrolls. Uh, now, with this new version of it, you might be surprised where I landed on that list a year or two ago. So now it is it's reworked, spore cost. And your idols are healed by one, so it's it's like Imperial Resources. And then all your beasts get plus two attack until end of turn and you draw a beast scroll. So immediately it's a cantrip, so it pays for itself in scrolls. You'll get you'll get a scroll from it, so you're not wasting a scroll, and then it's a crimson bowl if you have a beast deck. And then like the idols thing is just a little add-on. So this is going to be good. This is definitely going into beast decks because you draw. The key thing here is you get a good effect and you draw a beast. So it's like a one, it's like a one extra cost crimson ball. I'm not sure if this is good enough to go in decks that aren't solely beast decks, but we'll see. It's definitely a good scroll now. Um, next is Sister the Bear. Uh, used to be a four two four, now it's a five two four. This is good for Sister the Bear because it was always so boring and vanilla. I just like. Never really played over the Wetland Rangers, the, the Sharp Fang Bears, the uh, the uh, other four drop guys. But at five attack, and she might get some play. She can now two hit idols. You never know. Maybe she'll be an aggro, um, just destroying those idols really fast. So we'll see how uh, she gets played now. Oops. I'm just gonna turn all this stuff. Uh, and are we done with the growth? No, we have one more growth scroll. Gustory Azura. Gustory Azura. Uh, just gain one more health. It's a 526 that needs to be a 525. Five. Uh, this is a worthy buff. I always thought it was pretty bad for a 6 cost scroll. A 525 with flying, again, flying. Like a, un it's like an overrated trait. Doesn't really do a whole lot. Unless you have like a rally to play with it. So the one extra health does help. Still not like a good six drop on on par with how good witch doctor or the new niara is but still one health 
Always matters. Alright, those are all the growth stuff, and I'm taking a lot of time. It's already been 20 minutes into this video. Let's uh, get a move on. <laughs> Next is Blast Strike. It now costs one. That's it. Just costs one less. Uh, pretty simple here. It's going to be played a little more often as Utility Scroll. I used to play it a bit in my range energy deck. It's really fun to get on a Hired Marksman. And I might try that again now that it's only one cost. You could just get a get that combo off with a little less resources. Uh, rigged, here's an interesting change. Uh, so it used to deal 4 damage to the creature that attacked it. Now it deals 2 damage to all the creatures on the same row for the opponent. I'm not sure if this is a buff or a nerf. I think it's intended to be a buff, but I'm not sure if it really helps because it's also almost like a nerf. Uh, now the creature that attacks is only going to take 2 damage, not 4, and you kind of wanted that 4 because it killed almost all the creatures that attacked it. Uh, but now, the other creatures in the row are just going to take two, 2 damage also, but it, remember, it's, your, it's the opponent that's choosing where their creatures are standing and where they're attacking, so they could really just move all their creatures outside of that row to attack it. So, it's a eh, buff, so I don't think this is going to be played rigged. Uh, Snargle Brain now simply gets plus three health if energy is four or more. So this is this is just this is like the third buff for this card. It was originally uh, when energy is six or more, then it was energy is four or more. Now it's a uh, unit goes to gets plus three health instead of plus two health. So now it's even um, so now it's even better than a Crown of Strength, which we'll see in a second too. It's better than a Crown of Strength that more than four energy. But the problem with energy using the scroll is that most energy scrolls don't really benefit from big enchantments like this. Because they don't have a whole lot of Relentless or One Countdown, which are the things that really benefit from enchantments. I mean, Wind Up Auto is like almost like One Countdown, so we might see this going Wind Up Autos, but it still only raises your attack by one. Uh, so I don't really see this being played too often still. So. Uh, next. Catapult of Goo. Um, this thing, it really will never be, it will really never see play, will it? <laughs> it's, it's a cost lowered to two now, so now it does all of this stuff. It's this huge structure for only two costs. And frankly, I still don't think it's gonna be played. You can really just forget about all of this. It never seems to hit anything because Catapult of Goo. Um, lower it to one cost and just, then it will be played. Because then it's just a straight up a better useless contraption. <laughs> but still, I don't think uh, all these things are worth the one extra cost from a useless contraption. So that's Catapult Goo for you. Poor, poor scroll. Next we have Golem Skin, uh, which was changed recently. It used to just destroy all your structures, but and then it changed, and then it dealt two magic damage to all your structures. Now it deals one magic damage to all your structures. I guess they thought the two magic, two magic damage to all the structures would increase uh, its playability, but then nobody still played it, so now it's one magic damage. And I still don't think people are going to play it, but uh, just, the decks that this would work for is structure energy decks because you have enough structures, but they don't really need to really be enchanting big creatures like that, that's the problem. These are like good, interesting scrolls just like that have the effect that is, it's just like geared to the wrong thing, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's always cool to have these cool option scrolls, but I just don't think it's gonna really see play still. You're not gonna put this on like a Solemn Giant, which is like really one of the only scrolls to structure energy has. It already has eight attack. I guess you could put it on like a wind up auto, like I said. Gravelock Burrows. The linger was increased to eight. It's already had like a big linger at five. Uh, but Slinger is 8 now. Really, remember when I used to play Gravelocks and I was like one of the latter for a while, it was just Gravelocks are so strong. And then the Gravelocks got nerfed as they should have because Gravelocks are too powerful and Gravelock Elder was uh, nerfed, took away its attack buff. And uh, then nobody played Gravelocks anymore. So you see how much of Gravelocks are tied to that one scroll. What was good is they changed Gravelock Burrows so that it kind of made up for Elder's attack loss, so it wasn't good enough. Um, but I think Gravelock Burrows was is a little underrated, and now at Eat Linger it might be uh, might be very good now. Gravelock actually get this out early, and you'll have a lot of attack as you go forward. It might actually replace the Elder thing now, but we'll see about that. Also, we'll see uh, 
the query block was changed in just a bit. Inferno Blast now costs two instead of three. Now it's on the same level as Spark and stuff, so maybe this will be played as some counter removal. I don't know, I, pro I probably wouldn't do it. Uh, there's just so much like. Also, there's like magic resistance now, like really one magic damage uh, for two costs for a bunch of creatures could be useful, but it's really hard to find deck space nowadays. Metal Heart. This is reworked. You really you never saw people ever using Metal Heart. Uh, it was like a focus, but you need a lot of structure in the board. Now it turns your creature into an automaton, and it gets an increased attack by the number of automatons you control. Uh, now, this is definitely a pretty good scroll, and I think it might be put into automaton decks just because it's gonna be like a focus for automaton decks or bigger than a focus. Just play this on like a play this on a on a what's it called a wind up auto and just go hand or just use it as like a normal focus on a creature to destroy an idol. Uh, but then this first part of it where it says enchanted creature counts as an automaton, yeah, that makes sense flavor wise. But it doesn't really help the deck that it's in, because it's going to be in decks with a lot of automatons, which means you're not going to be able to play this on a creature that's not an automaton already, probably. Uh, so, I don't know, that's just probably in for flavor. Wouldn't really do much like that. And being an automaton, I guess it gets benefit from scout automatons. And it counts as automaton for another creature's metal heart. So that's cool. Next we have Supercharged, uh, which now makes a one range attack when you play it immediately and then again every turn. That's a big change for supercharged because now it's almost like a ragged wolf. You could just play it and ping deal one damage. Uh, it's probably still not going to be played uh, because I mean ragged wolves are better because they can be enchanted, they can have attack buffs from other creatures and stuff like that. This, I don't know, it's just two costs, you enchant your thing and then... So what? Uh, your opponent can still play around the uh, later pings, so I don't think this will be played that much. Next, Electrify. Now, each structure you control makes a ranged attack dealing two physical damage. It used to be one physical damage, and it's also its cost was increased to three from a tr from two. I do like this change a lot. Um, now I think I'm gonna put this in my structure energy deck and just have it in there because two two damage is just so much better than one you can it could actually be part of the win con now uh, i'm just gonna i'm gonna have this i'm just gonna play it and just like deal two damage to the whole side maybe even some corrodes in there i know blinky tried something like that before i mean it might be viable now electrify plus corrode and a structure energy deck uh next we have hopefully i'm not skipping any scrolls by like having a scroll in front of another one next we have ember bonds uh which now the enchanted unit uh, is dealt three magic damage uh, before it attacks instead of two magic damage before it attacks. So definitely needed to be uh, buffed because it used to just usually be a worse spark because it cost one more resource. Now it deals three damage for three wor three resources. Still not that good because it's a delayed three damage. You really want to play that three damage like right then and there. Of course. You can always, it can always be played in something that has more than 3 health and then it can eventually destroy it, but you don't really see that being done too often, so I don't think it's going to be played too much, but it's still okay in Judgment and stuff, it's always some nice removal if you need it, especially because it deals the damage before it attacks, uh, unlike Arthritis, which we'll see in a second. Next is Scatter Gunner. Uh, Scatter Gunner, like Sister of the, Sister of the Bear, uh, just increased attack to 5. Um, I do like this change. Scatter Gunner used to be just like one of the go-to ranged energy guys, and then like people notice it's really not that good. It dies to Soul Steel and like every kind of energy uh, magic damage. So then people stopped playing it and just played like Boom Reaver instead, even though it lost attack. But now with five attack, people might start playing Scatter Gunner again. It's a two hits of idols. Uh, it destroys a lot of creatures. A lot of five drops now. So. I don't know, we might see uh, Scattergunner making a comeback here. I know I'll, I'll probably try it in a human range energy deck soon. Next we have Siege Cracker. Uh, it just increases health from 3 to 4. Definitely a big change, whenever you change a creature's health from below three, from below 4 to at least 4, uh, 
that's huge. You can survive veteran hits, burns, um, really three to four is a huge change. And this is a three cost creature, so we know three cost creatures that with four health at least seem to always be played. I'm not so sure about Sea Tracker, but it, I think it's definitely much better now. Um, does a lot of idle damage, he just he's gonna survive a bit longer now. Uh, I, I, only, I only see him being played in Judgment decks or melee energy decks, which tend not to be that good. Uh, he's not gonna really make him make it into a range deck with the with the high uh, competition for the three drops in the deck. But uh, he'll be in his own niche decks, and he's a little stronger now than he used to be. Next is Snarble, uh, which has his health increased to five. It used to be four, so pretty simple change here. Uh, it's pretty uh, worthy of a change because nobody really played Snarble except for those melee energy decks. So just like uh, Seed Trucker, this is really only going to be played there. Um, because that also energies a lot of spells, and like that resonance effect kind of hurts it. But it's still a 5 2 5 4 4. So you never know when it's going to be played. Next is the Gravelock Elder. I mentioned this a second ago, uh, a few minutes ago. Uh, its attack was increased to 4. So obviously, this isn't going to do a whole lot for uh, Gravelock decks. Gives a creature one extra attack. But it's. Who knows, maybe it's gonna make... Gravelock Elder used to be in uh, range energy decks a lot. And maybe we'll come back to that. Four attack, uh, probably not... The attack increase from 3 to 4 is probably not quite as uh, important as the health difference from 3 to 4, but 3 to 4 attack is you can destroy those 4 health creatures now, um, which a lot of creatures have. So that certainly helps. And maybe it will come back to uh, range energy decks too. So I do like the Greylock Elder change. Now, callback. Target unit you control is returned to your hand, and your current order is increased by the unit's cost. So, really, just a better metempsychosis. Uh, I could see this being abused in like control decks, but cool concept. Um, you can get your unit out of there and just play it for the same number of resources or get your resources back. Uh, so I, I do like this card and I think um, it definitely will be played in weird control decks. Crown of Strength, a small change. Now the unit counts as a knight, just like what plate armor does, it counts as a knight. Uh, I mean, it makes sense. Crown of Strength. It seems like a knight thing. Sorry about the phone ringing. Um, Crown of Strength, uh, sometimes played in tempo order, I've seen it played before, uh, just because you get a little attack and health buff, but it really stopped being played with all these better options coming out, like uh, like Eternal Sword, and then there's Relaros, which can increase attack so easily. So I don't think this is going to be played, especially because the knight thing doesn't really help tempo order, because tempo order uh, is more soldiers, and knights are more mid to late game. But yeah, so this won't really change much for Crown of Strength. Faith Blessing. Here... Might not seem like it, but I think this scroll and all these 52 scrolls change might be the biggest change to the meta. What it does, it used to just heal your idol by 4 when you hurt your uh, creature, but now it heals your idol by 2 and hurts the opponent idol by 2. That is huge. Faith Blessing, it's still probably a bad scroll overall, because why would you really want to be hurting your own creature? Um, but it used to be worse because you, you didn't, you never really wanted to heal your healing your idols overrated in scrolls. Um, you only have to defend, defend three idols. You really can't find a time to play Faith Blessing. But now there uh, there is a double edged sword to this, uh, and it's like Decimation. You deal two damage to the opponent idol. Um, this is not as good as Decimation because you don't get the side effect of dealing magic damage across your opponent's row, destroying betters and stuff like that. But I think I'm going to run three of these in my Tempo Order decks just so I can have, in essence, th six decimations. So I don't have to be afraid to sacrifice early decimations. I know I'm going to have so many later on. So I just might make more aggressive order decks and just have three Faith Blessings and three decimations just because I know I'm going to be able to uh, just destroy one or two one or two idols early on and just use all the decimations and Faith Blessings later on to destroy the third idol. So definitely 
a crazy game changer here with Faith Blessing. I don't know, maybe I'm overreacting. But I'll, I'll try to make it work in tempo order. Fields of Strife. Now it costs 2 instead of 3. Another worthy change. Um, it wasn't really ever played. Uh, these also Knights don't really need the attack up that much because they all, a lot of them already have a high attack and none of them are really rel relentless or one countdown. It's really the soldiers that are relentless with the uh, Wings Cleaver and the Skirmishers. So I don't think Field of Strife being 2 cost really helps it that much, but I mean in some hardcore knight decks I guess it lets it be played a little easier. Just Conviction, uh, the soldier of the spell. Um, it's reworked, now it's cost 2. And when a soldier you control is destroyed, its attack is like latched onto an adjacent creature until its next attack. Um, that is interesting. Definitely important for like tempo order to not waste attack. So this could be played and just like if you lose a creature, you'll keep its attack around uh, and just destroy an Edo with it. So uh, maybe it will be played. I don't really know. Um, problem is, it probably encourages you to bunch up your creatures. Uh, which can be punishing with things like Thunder Surge, Storm Runner, all, a lot of things are punishing like that Meyer Curse. So we'll see. We'll see if that's going to be played. Mystic Altar, um, now it costs it's cost 2, it used to be cost 3, I don't think it's going to be played. We don't even see it really played in like control, like late game order decks, like it's just, it's just, it's, maybe it should have its health increased to 4 like a lot of the other order structures. Just, just doesn't do a whole lot. Maybe if it, you could increase the countdown of an opponent creature then it will be played but as it stands right now that the cost lower to two doesn't really matter but again when i say it doesn't matter it does matter at least a little bit any little buff even though people may complain like oh you didn't do enough it is doing something it just makes a tiny difference um which helps the scroll be a little stronger uh now plate armor uh now uh it gives the unit plus one health, which, wait, didn't, I'm pretty sure the changes, I think I already gave one plus one health, I think it's supposed to give plus two health. Um, plate, 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 plate armor. Now it gives plus two health, so I guess this is just like what we just saw before, where it's not fully updated yet, but. Yeah, so plus two health and armor one. That's uh, much better because every for each health combined with armor is like two health basically. So definitely makes a difference. Um, get this on like a spiky unit, and you'll have yourself a good time. Your opponent will be very uh, sad. Uh, so maybe this will be in some like mid range decks. Also, I thought this made your unit a knight. If I'm mistaken. Maybe it used to. They took that away. I don't know. I guess that's just uh, Crown of Strength now. Looks like plate armor is more like knight armor though. So I don't know. Next is Soldier's Bond. Uh, now it has all units on the row have their countdown. All your units on the row have their countdown decreased by one when the when the adjacent unit is dealt damage instead of just units behind it. So you don't have to just like only put it on your blocker in front. This doesn't change a whole lot. I don't think this would be played. Uh, but again one of those things where it helps a little bit I guess uh, next we have here is an interesting change which people are arguing about on reddit right now wing soldier giving given creature strike 3 I think this is the first creature with creature strike uh, basically is like idle strike it will do extra damage uh, so the wing soldier when it when it hits and when it damages a creature it will deal three extra damage so essentially what Mojang was trying to do here is now there's a it's almost like a four four two two against other creatures so a two cost uh, creature for uh, with four attack certainly um, is very good it's like like uh, outcast or we just saw a while ago except outcast or is three counts on the wing soldier is two counts on. so this will be like one of the fastest big health creature destroyers in the game the problem is two things actually. First of all, it can easily be blocked by armor. Uh, so now Wing Soldier used to have three attack, just so it would just like have an easier time against armor. Now even armor one is gonna make this deal zero damage. The creature strike will only come into effect if you deal some kind of damage. Uh, so that is definitely 
a problem with that. And then also, Wing Soldier, it's in tempo order, usually, which really likes to destroy idols fast. They kind of focus on that. And the one one attack there, uh, I don't think I'm going to be running this in tempo order anymore. Uh, I really want my creatures to pound in those idols, and at one attack, you're really not helping the cause. So, in my opinion, I think this is a, more of a nerf than a buff. Well, anyways, this this scroll didn't really need a buff because it's being played in tempo order decks, like competitive decks. Uh, but it feels like almost a little more of a nerf because of the armor and the less idle damage output. Uh, but not a huge deal. Uh, tempo order still has other two drops it can play with. And uh, I saw I saw Mons talking about it for a second in uh, IRC. I think it was just meant more of instead of a nerf or a buff more of just make the scroll more interesting which can't blame him for that it's uh it used to just be a vanilla creature when it could be something different but vanilla creatures not a bad thing to have in the game next is wing sorceress now uh, when you purify one of your creatures or opponent creatures uh, all the enchantments and effects are removed not just the uh last one i think it should work like this the whole time i'm not sure why uh, Originally, it was only the last effector enchantment. It really should just get everything, uh, which is much better now. Now, when you're trying to get rid of the infectious blight, it won't only take away like the poison, or like the brain lice. You won't only take away the poison. Uh, so, wing sorceress, maybe that will be played now. A uh, cool scroll that d didn't really take off when it came out. Another cool scroll that didn't really take off when it came out is uh, Storm Knight, which small buff here. Now it has five health instead of four. Uh, definitely uh, a good change. It, it kind of gets overshadowed by Order's other five drops like Royal Vanguard, Storm Knight, and uh, is that it? Royal Vanguard and Storm Knight. I might be missing one. Uh, but now, wait, I keep saying Storm Knight. Royal Vanguard and Knight Sergeant. Storm Knight now with five health. Has, has uh, used to be a 4 2 4, which just was not good for a five cost creature. Uh, especially without Relentless, move 2 can only do so much. Um, so I do like the increase to 5 health. Uh, now it has a spot in the mid-range knight decks. Next is Arthritis, uh, which now instead of dealing 1 damage after the creature attacks, it deals damage equal to the countdown, uh, which makes sense. Um, so it's a cool change and it makes it a little bit stronger, which uh, is good. Probably not uh, strong enough to get get it played often, but uh, most scrolls where every little bit helps. Just put it on like a three countdown creature and it's going to explode. Who knows, maybe, maybe it will be uh, played. Put this on like a solemn giant and then uh, it can only attack one time and then it dies. And you're only playing a one, one cost scroll to do this. Put it on a Tyrene Brute like that and it dies too. Or an Arbalist deer. So yeah, maybe this pe maybe people will play ar uh, Arthritis. Can destroy some nice big threats uh, playing only a one cost scroll. Does uh, take some time then you have to let yourself get hit by a whole attack. Next is Atrophy. Uh, I guess you can negate that big attack with Atrophy. Um, this is the second time Atrophy has been buffed. I uh, used to decrease the attack until next attack by five. Now then it was set to zero, uh, and, and where it couldn't be increased. Uh, which I didn't really like too much. I wanted to increase my attack after it was set to zero, but now it's until its next attack, and not just for the next turn. Uh, which doesn't really change a whole lot from what it just was. Now it allows the decay player to play this like three turns in advance. Um, yeah. So I don't know. It's kind of just like I guess you could put this on a wind up automaton. And just like no, it's like not going to hurt you for a long time. But it's only one cost. It really didn't have to be played too far in advance, so it doesn't really help it a lot. But still okay. Next is bitter root. Um, now it is only one cost. So at one cost, and did it have three health before? I'm not sure. But right now it's a one cost three health structure with poisonous. Which we know how good poisonous is. It's very hard to very hard to avoid. Um, because it's a structure, it might not be played. You can't really move the poison around. But uh, it will definitely be in some super poison decks from now on. 
now and then. Uh, another one of those scrolls uh, is Infected Gravelock. It used to be a 223 for two costs, now it's a 222 for one cost. So it's for decay, it's like a ripper, but then it has move zero and poisonous. So that kind of counteracts it. Uh, it's, and it's not a human. It's Gravelock though. Uh, I kind of liked how Decay had the two cost poisonous thing. Now all the poisonous things like Major Rat, Infected Gravelock, uh, whatever that thing which was, the uh, Bitter Root, they're all one cost. That's not too cool. But Infected Gravelock, if anything's going to be one cost, this guy can be because now he is easier to splash into energy decks with growth and stuff to have another Gravelock in there. Um, so that's cool. So there's Infected Greylock for you, and you do see <laughs> Infected Greylock getting some play right now, eager to battle. I know some people are playing that deck, which is really annoying. Uh, so that's that. Next is Unforeseen Onslaught. Not a huge change here, but now... Did it have two costs last time, or was it always three costs? I'm not sure. But now the Slayer effect will stay on that creature until it attacks. So like another one of the scrolls where you can play in advance. Uh, you usually want to play these rolls as a prize factor anyways, so it doesn't really change a whole lot. Just a little tiny little buff. Next is Morbid Curiosity. I like this change a lot. Pretty large uh, change here. Um, same thing. Uh, you can draw, it's kind of like a, a lot of things do this kind of thing. K has a similar ability. Uh, Reaper's Mask has a similar ability. Just, you draw a scroll when you destroy a creature with that creature but here's the catch now it's always going to be a cantrip you're going to draw a scroll when the creature dies so it will, it will almost always pay for itself uh, which is from could make it go from not played to in a lot of decks and I think that will happen uh, problem is the K doesn't really have a lot of relentless creatures to really destroy a lot of creatures every turn for a creature uh, but who knows maybe just put this on a Varus and just go to work uh, so, but it is cost three now. It used to be cost two, so that's a little bit uh, of justification with a, such a increase in ability here. You draw one scroll when it, when the creature is destroyed. That's just huge. Next is Pest Simulator. I uh, used to have one attack now it's two attack. Uh, one of those scrolls that's really cool, but it's hard to fit in on Decay's four cost uh, slot. Lots of competition. Maybe we'll make it onto that now has two attack. Um, you can almost think of it as like three because it will deal poison damage afterwards. So, yeah, maybe she'll she'll be played. She's already played a bit, and maybe she'll just play it a little bit more now. So that's her pretty uh, justifiable change. And now, unbind costs four instead of three, and this. A lot of people aren't, don't like this too much because now it costs the same as Damning Curse and people liked it how it was like 3 cost on them, on buying 4 cost Damning Curse. But this probably was did need a change because people were abusing how you could just play Corpse Theft on an opponent unit and then unbind and then all of a sudden you have like an Urhold <laughs> and uh, you didn't really and you just played 2 scrolls and destroyed an opponent Urhold. Uh, but one cost to that combo isn't really going to do a whole lot, so I don't know if that was really what should have been done, but doesn't really change a whole lot on Bind now. It is four costs like Damage Curse. And now Monstrous Brood. Final scroll here. Um, used to be you just, all your creatures of one, of one uh, type are destroyed. Like, you can get all your beast rats from the rat kings to turn into monstrous brutes. Now, all adjacent creatures are destroyed and placed by monstrosity. This makes it a lot better. You can... It used to only be played in decks you just put, them all, put all the rats around a watcher or a, a scavenger construct with anivore and you get a lot of scrolls and just win. Now, I could see this being played in just, like, a normal decay deck where you just have a full board. And you just play this around a watcher or play it normally and you have a lot of, like, five attack creatures... Uh, so maybe just, I'll, I'll just put like one of these in my Mono Decay deck just for a surprise factor. Because you can get all adjacent creatures now. So that's that. Those are the 52 change scrolls and what I get this video in about 50 minutes. 
Uh, I'll take that. So, also, I just note I did on go on sc my Scrolldrew account. You can find all of my uh, decks. I updated them for Echoes. Made uh, made changes to like almost all of them. So you can go check that out. Uh, my Scrolldrew account is just NRP123. So yeah, that's it. Uh, I think next this is the last video of me on this laptop. So I'll have my new computer. I might do some kind of building my new computer video. Uh, but yeah, hopefully uh, I'll be going back to 1080p videos and streaming on Twitch and all that stuff. So yeah, follow me on Twitch. Uh, follow on Twitter. Like the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more content. And I'll see you next time. Keep on scrolling, scrollers.